One is a completely new, thoroughly modern, not very XL sized luxury car. The other one is not entirely new, but still is a very modern and a bit XL sized luxury car. And the third one is not new at all. It's actually a bit dated, but it was always meant to be an XL sized sedan. Hello and welcome to Pit Stop. Today we have the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, which is the 300 diesel, the BMW 3 Series Grand Limousine, and the Lexus ES 300 H, which is the only hybrid in the mix. On price, they are all very evenly matched, and the mid-sized luxury sedan game has never been as exciting. The 3 Series Grand Limousine is a car that we have come to appreciate immensely and think that it has all the ingredients to make it the definitive car in its class. And then of course is the C-Class and in this form which is the 300D, it is the most powerful non-AMG version of this product. Then the ES300H, well it's a Lexus. We could have stopped right there and summed up these cars like that. But the way they go about doing things and the variance in their personalities makes for a very intriguing meetup of sorts. Three very different examples which could not have been any more different that are trying to come together to find some commonality. Right, starting with the Mercedes C-Class and instantly your neck is going to get busy appreciating the work that the designers have invested into the cabin of this car. There's just so much going on in here. So many textures, colors, design nuances. It's all extremely exciting. The basic design here at the front is not extraordinary or radical. It's actually quite pleasant, but the treatment of the different elements is what makes it special. The ambient lighting underlines the exuberance of this cabin. And don't take my word for it. Drive this car after dusk settles down and you will know exactly what I mean. On the outside, it's a bit silently aggressive, this car, in its sharp clothes that this variant of the C-Class has borrowed from AMG's cabinet. Overall, the new C looks suave without being snooty in any way. It's simple but confident surface treatment that makes uh, this car sit extremely well balanced on the road. Under the skin, it is not only about the strong diesel engine with the ISG or in other words, a 48 volt electrical system which acts as a torque fill system. Under the skin, this is a lot of tech of a very different kind of proper gadgets and software kind. What else? Well, there is the Mercedes Me app, which lets you access a wide range of information about your car on the phone. And uh, the car can also be logged, unlogged. It can also be started through this app itself. And owners will also be able to geofence it. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on here, which uh, truth be told, is uh, getting pretty common these days now across the board. You get all the tech and software trickery going on in the infotainment system which is controlled through this really big screen up in the middle. There's everything at your disposal. Connectivity through all the sources, including Apple, CarPlay and Android Auto. There's wireless charging as well. And uh, then you get the fantastic MBUX system and uh, even a fingerprint scanner right here uh, to basically let you access your profile and all the settings that you have created with that profile. The engine's strength in the power delivery through the gears is very clearly visible. In this 300D form, the C is easily the quickest car here, dismissing 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in a mere 5.7 seconds, which is about half a second quicker than the BMW in the equation. But it is not only about the heavy grunt of this diesel engine with 265 horsepower and 550 newton meters. It is the way the chassis communicates with your inputs as well. The steering, well, it feels light, but it's not wavered in any way. Just that 
the actual feel is missing but at the same time it gets the job done i never thought that i would be saying this but the driving position in the c class feels a lot more likable than the other two cars here that we have more so against the 330 which is just bizarre because a bmw you would expect that car a bmw to be more driver focused but somehow that's not the case is the c class that has the best seating geometry the pedal box is completely in line with your feet and the controls are very nicely judged the dynamics are also pretty sorted it's the smallest by comparison and it shows in more ways than one on driving response the chassis feels tight and lively and it's actually way more fun than i thought it would be But it's not all hunky dory in here. The access to the cabin is quite low and the space is just okay to be honest. The seats are great though, no doubt about it, but again, there is just not enough space under the front seats for the passengers in the back to stretch out and get comfortable. And that's where the Lexus ES300h comes into the scene and sits with legs stretched out and crossed up in a league of its own the seats could have benefited hugely from a little bit more base area but other than that the cabin is impressively 2000s in the company of the c class and the 3 series the lexus feels like it's a generation behind and there are buttons lots of buttons this is largely a rear seat experience and in being that it's absolutely wonderful and then when you start digging through the rest of the car especially the infotainment system go through its menus and the sub menus you'd not find much to play around with but at least there is android auto and apple carplay but what this car is all about is the ride quality and it is excellent it may not have the isolating sophistication of the bug but the way it goes over bumps or any major undulation is worth a standing ovation the bug sometimes feels a bit concerning not because the plushness is compromised that's not the case it's instead to do with how going over the same undulation feels subliminally The suspension competence of any car absorbs the bumps and there is some level of sound that the system makes. In the Merc that sound just kind of gets transferred into the cabin and you can feel that metallic hard stop of its travel. You almost clench your bottom when this happens. In the Lexus there is no such thing. It simply goes over any undulation and you don't even notice. And that's maybe down to the fact that it has slightly better bushings or rubber parts perhaps. or just that the underpinnings are not aluminum they're made of steel unlike the BMW and the Mercedes the design of the Lexus is completely the opposite of the other two cars here it's bold and instantly eye catching without being offensive in any way which is strange because that spindle grille can be a bit of an eyesore on some other cars The rear end is also very smartly done with several layers breaking up the bulk. This has got to be the most striking car of the three, which is saying something because Lexus has always been a brand about understated grace and gentlemanly demeanor. The ES is strangely the opposite of that in a lot of ways and yet very satisfyingly true to its legacy as well. Whatever it may be, it is a damn good looking car. The ES has the biggest engine over here, 2.5 liters, which uh, with the hybrid component makes about 215 horsepower and uh, 221 newton meters, and it drives all that power through a CVT gearbox and goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.5 seconds. The motor itself, in isolation, is worth about 118 horsepower and 202 newton meters, and this is a 245 volt system that works with a nickel hydride battery. and that battery itself is made by packing 204 cells together
Inside, the quality of everything you touch is excellent. The gear lever, for example, when you shift it through the vertical path, it gives a very industrial feel and uh, it's a good sort of feel because it feels very robust and reassuring. In fact, the entire car in general just gives you that sense that it will go on for decades and decades without breaking into a sweat. But it is not fun in any imaginable way. And there is no point driving this car enthusiastically. It just will not play ball with you. Even if you coerce it with speed around corners, it is politely going to respond with understeer and suggest that you give it the respect that it gives you. So the ES is a nice big luxury sedan which is a very cosseting experience and it is going to egg you on to go for a nice long cruise and just keep driving for hours on end. It is going to gobble up the miles without any issues. But you also get this feeling that this thing does not have any sense of humor. And sense of humor is what this BMW has ample of. It is not the standard 3 Series, this is the Grand Limousine. It is a term that I think should not be taken too seriously. But having said that, it is a very nice and spacious and comfortable sedan for sure. It's Merck's traditional rival and has a few things in its ammunition bag to keep it in the hunt against the fantastic C-Class. But the 3 Series Grand Limousine, well, it looks quite middle of the road here. It's neither instantly eye-catching or sharp as the Lexus, nor has that subdued aggression of the Mercedes. The design is, frankly speaking, the dullest part about this extended 3. But the opposite can definitely be said about this cabin because this is where a fair amount of change has occurred and this big slab of glass makes the infotainment unit very, very slick. The user interface has improved immensely as well, but Merck's MBUX is still the best system in the business right now. On features, it matches a Mercedes for every show of the hand, but when it comes to sheer pizzazz and the presence, it's nowhere close. The C-Class is the fashion diva in this group. But the three makes up and it tries to claw back some points against the C-Class. It is the more spacious of the two and uh, the seats, while they're a bit flat, are comfortable enough and the rear passengers also will not have much to complain about. It's overall a bit more pleasant to go for long drives in the three Grand Limousine than in the Merc and uh, this one is almost as good as the Lexus and that is saying something. But it is the dynamics where the 3 just drives past both the C-Class and the ES. The chassis feels a bit more excited to your inputs, the throttle pedal seems alert at all times and the general sense of playfulness is never lost in this car. This one is a nice and smile-forming thing. So. All these cars are great options in the luxury sedan space. One is a poster boy, the lead singer who wears bling all over, all the time. That's the Mercedes C-Class. The other is a gentle, affable, good-looking lead guitarist who will break into a hilariously good solo every single time you ask of him. That's the BMW 3 Series Grand Limousine. And then there's the long-haired bass player in a corner in his own groove but when it matters, the string play is absolutely insane. That's the Lexus ES. Three very different cars which approach the same segment in very different ways. Are they perfect? Not at all, not by a mile. But they definitely have strengths that are unique to them. And in being the cars that they are, they're just fantastic. Fantastic.